Hi everyone, this is Chicho. Welcome to my channel and welcome to another live stream. Today is February 23rd, 2019. Okay, I'm sorry, not 2019, 2020. And uh, we're doing a live stream on uh, Julian Assange and WikiLeaks open discussion. There's a handful of videos I've laid out here for us uh, to take a look at. Uh, possibly if the discussion takes us there uh, there is one I'd like to uh, make sure we uh, we take a look at uh, to start off it's a good little summary from yesterday's demonstration hello spider-man how are you doing free Assange free Assange doing well man doing well cooked up some uh, food today for a snack and uh, been uh, sort of editing a little bit Hannah how's it going brother How's life? We're getting lots of rain here. Sister city in Seattle. We're in the west coast of Canada, United States. So it's uh, it's an interesting time. It's an interesting time. Um, there was the march yesterday. X, how are you doing? How's life? Hope life is treating you well. Um, there was a sort of a march rally yesterday in london and uh, there's a little summary video that i'd like us to start off with once people start rolling in and we've done a fair bit of these west coast is the best coach don't you know chicho best coast yeah i'm <laughs> a coach what that's the best coast it is uh, for me it is i love it and i'm assuming you do as well even how are you doing steven Threven. I keep on forgetting how to say it but even is good yo yo how's life and for those of you uh, that have been here this is uh let me switch up our view just for a little because we're going to use two views we're going to talk this way and here's a sort of view we're going to take a look at uh, when we start taking a look at some of the videos and we do have a julian assange uh, wikileaks and julian assange playlist where we've done a fair bit of these for anyone watching this uh, on here right now live or watching this on another platform we start off this playlist with a uh, soft spoken or whisper reading of vault 7 and then we did a couple of live streams when julian assange was extracted out of the ecuadorian embassy and then once the trials begin the extradition hearing and all that jazz uh, since then we've done seven live streams and we've done soft spoken reading of uh, guantanamo bay files introduction to the guantanamo bay files and um, we did a soft spoken reading of the opcw uh, leaks okay um, and we'll just hold up for a little bit of time until people start rolling in uh, give people a little bit of time sometimes the notifications don't go out right away uh, about 10 minutes and then what we're going to do we're going to look at one video first to get things started the socialism put mo more money in the pockets of the middle class examples uh i <laughs> depends depends who's running it i guess no it doesn't yeah i'm with even it it's neither here nor there you can't categorize everything under socialism it's uh it doesn't make sense uh, hannah that's just uh, talking points that uh, mainstream propagandists are spewing uh, do you have any crypto uh, playlist i do hannah yeah yeah we do have a crypto playlist if you do uh, if you do chicho uh, cryptocurrencies or bitcoin videos should pop, should pop up and in the description of the videos uh, there'll be a link to cryptocurrencies okay the cryptocurrency playlist and that's very much related to personal finance as well the effects of socialism um even the you can't only myself and mods can link posts okay <laughs> not so hard nice ah nice spider-man you rock <laughs> i guess that's the crypto playlist uh, understood sorry no worries you can post the uh, links on our discord page you can post the links on our discord page right um it's just we're getting lots of just like any other live stream i guess you were getting phishing scams and stuff so we want to make sure everyone's safe on this 
you know, no one accidentally posts on uh, or clicks on a phishing link or something like this. While we wait a few more minutes, let's do. Ah, thanks, Spider Man. You rock. You rock. Let me do a. Uh, what do you call it? I'm just refreshing the page here for one second just to make sure just checking the time so we've been live for five minutes we'll wait another five minutes for people to roll in okay uh, I know one time one of the streams we had notifications went out like 15 minutes later or something let me show you the snacks I got here All right I got the uh, some mandarins and uh, chocolate I got dark chocolate and this one is peanut butter milk chocolate nice i want to purchase some soon but need some advice on where to uh, when to get started um i i talk about in general with the cryptocurrency stuff hannah i'm just talking about them in very broad terms i don't talk about where you can buy them what i recommend or anything like this right birdie how are you doing here's what i cooked up earlier it's sort of like uh my cuckoo recipe uh managers or managers are awesome and with chocolate fantastic this is sort of uh, i use the same thing as our cuckoo recipe uh, but this thing is i don't know what you call it i it's m me experimenting it's the first time i've made this thing is fantastic it's uh, uh cabbage red cabbage squash and potatoes cooked up and then mushed together okay i threw in some spices and then flour eggs uh, salt of course and mix it all up and cook it like cuckoo style right it's really good I made like uh, like they look like. I guess it's more of an Indian flavor I put some uh, turmeric in there right it's very good what about click uh, click bank I'm interested in investing that that as well. I don't know about ClickBank. Cuckoo looks like yummy. Yum, <laughs> it is. So ClickBank is a grouping of referral products. So they're putting a whole bunch of cryptos together and selling it as one package. Is that what they're doing? I don't know anything about ClickBank. It sounds like a sort of a platform where they're putting themselves between you and the exact the actual transaction clickbank has nothing to do with crypto doesn't it okay i don't i've never heard of it actually and it wouldn't be i'm not really interested in anything that has bank in their name so you know not even blood banks so anything with a bank in its name not really doesn't really hit my radar in terms of trying to look into it for investment and whatnot right so julian assange and wikileaks do you upload these streams to bitshoot for sure hannah yeah all the streams we do on twitch i upload to bitshoot okay as long as Bitchu is able to process, I think one of the streams we didn't upload anywhere. It just phew, gone. I have it somewhere in my hard drives, right? Uh, but all the streams we do on Twitch go on Bitshoot. Not all of them go on YouTube because of the censorship, right? So there's more and more Bitshoot exclusive videos being put out, right? If they're too sensitive, we're not going to put them on Bitshoot. Thank you, Spider Man, right? Uh, we're not going to put them on uh, YouTube, right? Because YouTube is putting black marks against us. Okay, so uh, you know we have to keep the platforms going. If they're rolling out major censorship, it's just they're going to start losing viewership, and disruptive innovation is going to take over, and YouTube is going to go way of eBay. It's just going to be a platform that just stays what it is, right? That's it. You know it's a tool it's not bad it's good right i enjoy youtube but we are pro freedom of speech here 
we are. If one thing, personally, I stand against is censorship. Censorship is bad in 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 every level possible. Okay, so we will continue to try to make sure we decentralized. Love YouTube videos, but they are way harsh on people's content. Way harsh. Way harsh. I still use YouTube a lot, right? But I'm using BitChute a lot more now. Not more than YouTube, but well, let me. Yeah, not more than YouTube because everyone that I follow on uh, YouTube, uh, that I watch their content on YouTube, is not on BitChute. But anyone that is that I am following, that I'm following their work, watching their videos and stuff like this. If they're on YouTube, I'm specifically watching their content on BitChute because they, like me, are also putting more content on BitChute than they are on YouTube. So I'm not interested in getting a censored version of what their, what their ideas are. I want to get the full perspective of what they think. And the only way you can get a full picture of what the content creators uh, that you follow um, what their ideas are without the YouTube censorship, which is basically a Disney censorship being forced on us, is to follow them on the other platforms as long as they are on another platform, right? Because that way they're loading on BitChute exclusive videos just like I am, right? Because there's certain topics there's no way you can discuss on YouTube. Some of the things you can discuss on YouTube, you'll get banned for. So um, it's crazy, okay? Just saying. So if you like my work, you're watching on this on YouTube. If you like the little filter being put on certain things you don't want to discuss, specifically politics related, um, then YouTube is OK place for you to be. Right. But if you want to get the politics, the economics, the everything else, uh, more and more, that stuff is going to be finding a home on BitChute, not on YouTube. OK. Google only cares about advertisers. Yeah. And you know what? It's not even advertisers, Spider-Man. Okay. As far as I see it, any platform that can't uh, figure out a way to bring in advertisers based on the content that is being put on their platform, it doesn't really want that content on their platform, right? It's not because they only care about advertisers. It's they're not promoting anything to anyone that they don't like to be uh, sharing information on their platform, right? For sure, they're chasing the big money, but Google is the big money, right? So I, I really can't believe that Google can't find people that want to advertise on alternative health products, can't find people that want to advertise on Corona COVID-19 videos because they're demonetizing all the core COVID-19 videos now keep in mind the independent people that are independently covering news and information and data on COVID-19 okay their videos are being demonetized so all the everything we've put out regarding COVID-19 including the mathematics of it is demonetized automatically on YouTube but news media sites such as cnn abc bbc and all this jazz the propagandists they cover news they also cover uh, uh, coronavirus covid 19 but their videos are not demonetized as far as i know right so they're basically taking any revenue away support away from independent media trying to cover news stories but they're 100 percent okay with the big boys doing it right it's 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 a it's a form of control manipulation. They use advertisement money as an excuse. It's more about control of information. Okay, advertisers are excuse. Control for propaganda is goal. One hundred percent agreed. Even one hundred percent agreed. <laughs> right. So we've been at this for about fourteen minutes. Let's watch a video. Okay. Let's take a look at this thing, gang. Let me switch up to this. Now, I'm not gonna go through uh, to give all the little intros and stuff that we've talked about uh, regarding WikiLeaks because we have a major playlist here. Let me switch up the angle on uh, so we can see the screen. Ch -ch -ch -ch, boop. Okay. We have a playlist here. The our WikiLeaks and Julian Assange playlist. So we've covered a lot of content here. If you want to catch up, go down to the first one 
read or listen to uh, vault 7 year zero reading uh, and there's a link in the description of all these videos that take you to the appropriate places and share more information okay and you can scroll through if you know about julian assange then you know the hearing is coming up tomorrow there was a march yesterday in london and uh, uh, there was a lot of videos coming out i found one put out by activism munich which is a very good channel i would recommend following these people right here activism uh, munich okay and i've turned on my notifications if you can see here oops right beside the subscribe i've turned on my notifications here so i get notified every time you load on a video some of the stuff is in german some of it is in english 50 50 approximately so i just watch the english stuff okay so they put out a sort of an eight minute video recapping what took place in london and i like us to sort of watch that because they interview a few different people uh, which are prominent supporters of uh uh, the no extradition for Julian Assange. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. uh what's up to the riot? How's it going? Beautifully says even said, yeah, yeah. Spider Man uh, agreed, even said it beautifully. And what he said is advertisers are the excuse, control of propaganda is the goal. Okay. The media are losing their minds over Sanders. One hundred percent agreed, right? And there's reasons for it just joined do we know where he he at oh void how are you doing we just started actually we're going to watch this uh video and the title of this video let me make sure this is all coming out uh yeah that's all good okay cool oops we don't want that okay so we're just going to watch this video it's sort of an eight minute recap of what took place yesterday and i have a whole bunch of other videos here that we can talk about uh, but if the discussion picks up we can you know we'll change the view we'll talk about whatever you guys want to talk about and we'll continue looking at the videos and reading an article and whatnot reap what you sow i still don't think they let him make it make it to presidency um i do, i don't think so either riot uh, i really don't think so either okay uh, but um it is an important thing that is taking place so this video is called julian assange stop extradition protest in london with varo focus vivian westwood and more and varo focus is the greek uh, finance minister i believe it was the finance minister that resigned after the uh, the party that they he was part of they nah, <laughs> they they lied to to the greek people and they didn't pull out a european union okay and let me know if the sound of this thing is too loud or too low and I'll kick it up. You're going to visit Julian Assange at some point in prison or at some point in the future. What is your message to him? And also, what can you tell our viewers who want to do something about it? What can they do tomorrow? Well, I'm visiting him tomorrow. And I can tell you that I'm visiting him with a great deal of trepidation and a sense of guilt because I'm going to go in there and then I'm going to get out and he's going to still be in there. Uh, I will convey the spirit of defiance, the spirit of solidarity and support towards him. Uh, we had a demonstration, our party, our movement, BM25, Merit 25 in Athens, now, as we speak, our members of parliament were outside the British Embassy. On the 10th of March, we are releasing Euroleaks, the uh, recordings that I made during the Eurogroups of 2015, something that Julian and I have, have uh, planned a long, a long time ago. So the, the struggle to give people their voice and their right to know continues.
every single human right of Julian's has been arbitrarily broken. Distortions of procedure, falsification of witness statements, the lot, the whole rotten lot of it. We believe that your presence, the presence of the observers, and your strength of will will buoy us up to make it plain to the Crown Prosecuting Service that ex extradition best be dropped now. Thank you very much. The US wants to rule a totalitarian world. Right now, the government of America, it, um, for the government of America, people are the enemy. Free Assange rock and roll. You work for Al Jazeera. Why are you here to support Julian Assange? Because usually they say journalists have to be objective and should not uh, take an opinion. Why is this matter of great importance to you? You know, it's funny because I've been covering demonstrations for 40 years. I've been in this, the business that long. Today is the first demonstration I actually felt a part of. And I felt a little bit uncomfortable about that. Because as you mentioned, journalists are supposed to be objective. But this story is essentially about journalism. It's a field I care about. Uh, and I did 25 years of work in journalism, just on journalism, and now I cover journalism. And I don't believe there is a more important story, a bigger threat to journalism, on the planet today than the Julian Assange case. And when the lackeys of the American empire come to take him, to destroy him, and hang him in the hedge, as a warning to frighten future journalists, we will look them in the eye and steadfast, with one voice, we will intone, over our dead bodies! You know, his conditions of confinement have changed. He spends uh, about 20 hours a day instead of 22 hours a day. His conditions have changed. He's now with 40 other prisoners. So it's important for human beings to be able to speak to each other. Okay. But his health hasn't changed. His, uh, the the uh, United Nations Rapporteur on Torture report is accurate. And there's an offer being considered uh, by the canton of Geneva in Switzerland uh, to extend a humanitarian visa to Julian because they have specialists in the hospital in Geneva who specialize in treating victims of torture, of psychological torture. So that's how it actually is. I am ashamed to be standing in the country among the institutions of the power of a country which tortures a publisher for publishing the truth when the people who committed the crimes which he exposed are still safe, still employed by the state and still in positions of power. This must not be allowed to stand. You've picked up from the 4th of February. Now this is becoming a movement. Could you talk about how the demonstration went today for Julian to stop the Julian Salas extradition? What was it take today? Well, I think it was a very important demonstration. Obviously, it comes at a very important time, immediately before the beginning of the extradition trial on Monday. Um, I think it shows that the movement is growing. Over the last few months, it's grown from some tens or twenties of people protesting to hundreds, to thousands, to some many thousands today, I think, out. Uh, I think the platform was very impressive to have Yanis Varoufakis, Chrissy Hine, Brian Eno, uh, Kristen Hoston. You know, that's an, an impressive breadth of cultural and political figures speaking up for Julian Assange. And I think it's at a time when it's also beginning to become more mainstream in the Labour movement. We've seen very important interventions uh, from Jeremy Corbyn in the House of Commons. We've seen John McDonald become the first UK MP to visit uh, Julian. So I would say this is a campaign which is now very definitely got the government under siege over this issue.
people usually will ask, yeah, do something, but what should I do? What Could you just list some concrete steps that people could start? Let's start with the easiest thing that people could do and go down all the list uh, just briefly. Okay. If you weren't here today, there are going to be many, many social media posts of the speeches and the demonstration itself. Get sharing those. Uh, share the link to the campaign, to the DEA campaign, the Don't Extradite Assange campaign. Donate money. We always need money. Indeed, the legal team need money. So any campaign, any movement, but definitely this one needs money. Give us some, give us some money. Turn out at Belmarsh on Monday or any day next week when the trial's going on. Keep an eye out for the material, the posters, the leaflets, the briefings that we're producing and spread them around, around your friends on social media, your family, your workmates, your trade unionists, people you know in your church or your mosque. There's uh, no end of things that can be done. Thank you, John, for your time. You're very well. So we leave that up. Um, Sorry about the paragraph long. No worries, Hayden. How are you doing? Welcome to no live stream. So let me um, just switch up the view. Um, we have Hayden here that mentioned that uh, uh, he he wants to catch up on what's taken place so far. So I thought I'd give you guys a little rundown, just Speedy Gonzalez style. And this question was actually asked of me during the last live stream. Um, and if you go to our playlist here here hayden let me show you let me bring this up right let me kick back to the other view this is our julian assange wikileaks and julian assange playlist so we've covered a lot of material so far all of this is everything about julian well as much as we've covered on julian assange in the last three years i guess and we've I've talked about Julian Assange before this as well, and written about Julian Assange. But we started off with a reading of Vault Seven, and we did some live streams, two-hour live streams, and uh, we did a reading of uh, WikiLeaks uh, Guantanamo Bay files as well as OPCW. And here's a video I put out uh, just because someone asked the same question on the last stream. So let's just take a look at this video, and then I'll expand on it. It's just a two and a half minute video. Okay, uh, because from there I can build it up, right? I can give you a little bit of more history. Extraditing Assange while the USA refuses to extradite and scholars would make the UK and UK government look extremely weak. They're puppets. Uh, it's not even just a weak uh, birdie. They are puppets, okay? So the UK, the government uh, of the UK right now uh, does not really represent the laws in the UK. It is being governed by outside parties one amazing that was a good video right it was good intro sort of brought not brought people up to speed of what's going on but where the battle is right now and here's a quick little video two and a half minute video when someone asked me what has julian assange revealed what has this information done for us right so let me just play this thanks for streaming question assange what has he accomplished by releasing secret documents? What has changed? What is better? Oh, wow, so much. Look at the information is there for anyone that wants it. Look at Vault 7. Now you know, anybody that says, oh, anybody's as paranoid that the government's doing, now you know what the government's capable of doing on the internet, which is basically masking. One of the things they can do is they can mask the signatures of where the information is being sold and all that jazz, right? Guantanamo Bay files, you know that they tortured a lot of people many times and the information that we're getting, majority of it, most of it, all of it was just BS. One bit of information they got that they used to sell this Iraq invasion in 2003 was that uh, Saddam Hussein was trying to build more chemical weapons or nuclear weapons, which was obtained under torture. And you know they they obtained it under torture after torturing a person for like eighty five times of waterboarding, which was false. The guy re redacted that information, not redacted, but said, "Oh, I lied because they were torturing me." Right? So false information from 
the OPCW DOMA dogs, we know that a centralized institution is supposed to be a watchdog to prevent prohibition of chemical uh, weapons around the world was co-opted by the United States, right, to wage war on Syria. They lied. They held back information, right? Just imagine what that means. What Julian Assange and WikiLeaks have done, the leaks have done, is unprecedented. What they have done in the last 10 years, 12 years of being active, right, is a game changer, a game changer, unprecedented. The most important journalist in the world, Julian Assange, the most important platform to share information and to hold power accountable, WikiLeaks. Do not discount what their effects have been. Unprecedented. Unprecedented precedent sorry i'm cutting myself off short but um so basically let me give you a rundown of wikileaks speedy gonzalez style right wikileaks when they came online their mission was to provide a platform where whistleblowers hi saint james just germany where whistleblowers could leak information to hold power accountable right anonymously very very important this is something that people have done with journalists left and right over the years right over the decades over the centuries really right but it's been very dangerous for whistleblowers to do this with centralized centralized power because they were easily found out who they were and they were severely punished executed eliminated whatever you want to call it right so wikileaks provided a platform where people could anonymously leak information to hold power accountable once they created this platform because there was so much wrong being done in the world in the name of citizens of certain countries okay certain people stepped up and they started leaking information leaking information to wikileaks and wikileaks started hitting the radar people's radar the country that is the most active in the world in the most number of countries in a brutal sense really that has its tentacles everywhere everyone knows who that is and that is the united states of america right so a lot of leaks i mean it, all you have to do is look at the mathematics just look at how much money the united states spends on weapons and how much the rest of the world spends on weapons. The United States spends 10 times more than the next 10 combined or something like this. So obviously there's gonna be more leaks coming in from the United States because they're active everywhere with 180 military bases around the world and actively engaged with multiple organizations, multiple countries around the world, right? So leaks started coming in, a lot of them from the United States the leak that really put wikileaks and julian assange on the radar to be of the powers that be that they realized wait a second we can't allow this platform to function okay and we cannot allow julian assange to go unpunished right and that video that leak was a collateral murder video Okay, there were leaks before that, but it was the collateral murder video that really put Julian Assange on the crosshairs of power. Okay, now what is the collateral murder video? Guess what? There's a short version of the collateral murder video, we've talked about this, that Julian Assange or WikiLeaks put out. Let me find it for you. Okay, here it is. And uh, here, let me organize this. Well, let's take a look at a three and a half minute video of the collateral murder video, which should give you appreciation of how important this leak was. And this was at the time, Bradley Manning, Chelsea Manning, as far as we know, that leaked this, right? Uh, let me just read one comment before we go on. OG as real. Uh, that's the biggest problem with torture, even staying away from the moral and ethical elements the threat of torture is much more effective at getting accurate info than the act uh, itself people will say anything to stop being uh, drawn 100 right and one of the lies that they used to 
justify the invasion of Iraq in 2013 was lies that they obtained all under torture, right? And they sold that to the American people and American, you know, citizens of the United States were like all gung ho, let's go invade Iraq because they're part of Al Qaeda, which which is all of it was complete lies. We all know this now, right? My gooch is hairy. Wreck. I have no idea what that means. So here's the video, shortened version of the collateral murder video, and this video is available. Uh, thanks, Spider Man. This video is available uh, in its entirety on the WikiLeaks um, page. All you got to do is go WikiLeaks collateral murder video. So let me change the view again, and let's take a look at this video. Anyone ever tell you that you look like? I have no idea who that person is. Let's take a look. Sorry, man. That was loud. Oh, yeah. I don't know how many times I've watched that video, the full version, and it's still devastating, and it is still unbelievable, uh, especially when you realize what took place, okay, what took place 
in the build up to that okay just so we put this into context uh, the importance of this video was there repercussions uh, for what the US soldiers did here the repercussions was they're crucifying Julian Assange right they put Bradley Manning in jail and she's back in jail Ch Chelsea Manning now of course Chelsea Manning is back in jail I see it needs more context let me give you more context okay now everyone knows that militaries that engage in war lie about civilian deaths everyone knows this right if you don't know this um, you you were born today it's not even yesterday if you were born yesterday you would know this right you're born today uh, okay so United States has been denying that they've been killing civilians every time it comes out that they kill civilians. Oh, there were terrorists. Oh, there were this, 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 right? This video came out after the news of this event hit the, hit the stage, right? So when the news came out that these people were killed by American soldiers, the American military came out and said they were militants, right? They were terrorists. They had weapons, right? All eyewitness testimony and everyone that knew what was going on was coming out and saying, no, they were not terrorists. There were two journalists. There were actually two journalists in this. And you didn't see the two kids. There were also two kids in that van that the U.S. military was shooting up. There were two children in that van, okay? The longer version of this video contains all the footage that you need to see. Right, and it must be, it, it should be viewed by everyone in the United States of what their taxpayers are doing in certain countries. Right, if I was a history teacher, I would start the year off by showing this video. Right, that is why I'm not in a centralized education system, right, because I would get my ass fired, right, because I would be held accountable to centralized power. Right, history classes should start off with this video now when the american military was denying that they had killed two journalists that they had sh just annihilated a whole bunch of civilians that were doing nothing they annihilated a van that was removing wounded wounded people to take them to the hospital which is a war crime which is unpro like it's crazy it's a complete war crime right they were denying this right they were saying there were militants there were this there were no journalists and all this jazz all of a sudden chelsea manning had leaked this information because she was at the time bradley manning working for the military i'm pretty sure anyone working for the military was aware of the crimes that they were that were being committed and bradley chelsea manning was one of the people that couldn't stand it anymore because she believes in the constitution of the united states and international law that war criminals should be held accountable should she, so she leaked this information to wikileaks and this video came out as soon as this video came out everybody realized that if they hadn't already realized which they would have been living in a treehouse somewhere right that everyone it became fact it became real for them that the united states military was actively executing civilians and journalists in iraq and hiding what was taking place there was there's secondary tertiary repercussions of this right because personally i haven't followed up on who the soldiers were that actually committed these war crimes but there's a lot of like if you look at the suicide rate in the united states for military personnel ex-military personnel it's double what the general population is right so there's a lot of military that is holding a lot of guilt within there's ptsd and stuff like this so it goes into the domestic politics of everything as well right as well as economics of it if you look at the afghan war afghan war papers that were leaked through washington post it's come out that since the bush jr administration when they went to afghanistan for the last 20 years 19 years every administration has lied to the american people that they're winning the afghan war they've all known that they're losing the afghan war there's no nothing to win there 
right? And they've spent like four, five, six trillion dollars of US taxpayer money to lie to the American people and kill who knows how many people in Afghanistan and the rest of the world, right? So the repercussions of this video were huge. This really put Julian Assange on the radar on of the United States government, which is really kick-started their crucifixion, their, their attempts to crucify Julian Assange, which they have been doing for the last number of years, right? I'm just going to read a, uh, read a little bit uh, of the chat that was being popped up uh, because I didn't want to break my train. I was popping up, I was reading at the same time, trying to do the same thing, right? So that's the collateral murder video, right? Huge, 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 uh, really gigantic. So I'm just going to read the uh, that, 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 uh, stuff. I'm sorry, Sleepy Waves. Yeah, Chelsea. Because at the time when this came out, she was Bradley, right? So I'm putting into context of what took place. But Chelsea Manning, of course, right? There's many Apache Kill Cam videos on YouTube. I've watched them all in a couple of years ago with a bunch of friends while we were hot. So many videos are like, does he have a weapon? And I don't know. Blast them makes people think yeah targets were frequently combatants that were tracked to locations while wearing civilian clothing combatants frequently engaged in in this video there were non-combatants that is that is a given post-apocalypse it afterwards the american military i believe they came and said yeah we killed journalists and riddled a van with two kids in it full of bullets and they were removing uh, the wounded to take him to the hospital and that is a literal war crime like this, there's a definition of war crime that's a war crime you can't assassinate people while they're the injured people while they're oh, the man didn't have you know markings of ambulance and stuff in it if it did i mean that would have been just over the top i guess right unfortunately the media did a good job um presenting assange as the reason hillary lost. yeah unfortunately they did right I'm in Florida, so this is my country doing that. It's it, Canada was involved in this as well. Canada was giving logistics for the Iraq war, right? We were involved in Afghanistan. We helped destroy Libya, right? So it's not the blame is not all on the United States. There are many Western countries that participated in these war crimes, right? Sounding like they were attempting to follow rules of engagement. Uh, they held fire until they believed they were armed. Uh, they they were not armed. No one in their right mind thinks that they were armed, right? Post-apocalypse. And what they were doing was basically doing what bureaucracy does, right? They're getting the okay from the superiors to shoot up a bunch of civilians, right? And the superiors were obviously watching this on video as well, I'm pretty sure, because everything's being live streamed and all this jazz of video game for them. So they were given a go-ahead to light them up, right? This is a pure no one disputes that this is not a war crime every like who maybe rumsfeld says that this isn't a war crime maybe cheney says that this isn't a war crime but any sane person would agree that this was a war crime they shot up a whole bunch of civilians journalists including and a van that wasn't even part of that group that came to remove the wounded right in what war in what uh international law is justified to shoot up a van that is removing the wounded off the battle ground if you want to call it that right straight up war crime there's no excuse there's no argument there's no there's nothing you could say about this right and this is the reason the main sort of catalyst that put julian assange in the crosshairs saying that this is uh this is a not so ideal situation is an understatement understatement but they didn't track them to that location they thought they they have ak but obviously didn't identify it very well since it wasn't international law and the specific rules of engagement state that armed fighters are legitimate targets whether these particular people were actual combatants they were not armed there was no weapons there i'm sorry you need to watch the whole video right difficult to see that means you don't engage yeah man these are drones doing the killing unfortunately uh this was an apache helicopter there were real people doing it right we fly these things 24 7 movies. right i believe these this was an apache helicopter it wasn't i don't think it was a drone was it 
Um, there's so much that's come out. Uh, it's hard to keep track of it all, right? I will say that insurgents always try and grab the dead and guns after fights due to beliefs of, uh, of burial. Either way, they shot up people removing bodies from a massacre, right? Typically, they would be directed to a group of people by intelligence that were tracking people. They make the determination about who they are and whether they are combatants or not. The pilot then has limited ability to determine that uh, from a distance. Sometimes bad calls were made. This wasn't just a bad call. This was a cover-up that was exposed when this video came out. The United States military kept on denying that civilians were killed in this massacre, right? You have to put it into context. It wasn't that the video was released right when the massacre happened. The massacre happened. Civilians, journalists were killed. Children were shot up. The U.S. military denied everything until the video came out. And they kept on denying it until it was obvious that they couldn't deny it anymore, right? So uh, there's no... Uh, <laughs> there's no excuse for what took place right what are the statistics on these types of drone strikes how many civilians do we kill per enemy kill uh here's the kicker riot sometime during the iraq war and the afghan war the u.s military said they're not going to count the civilian killed civilian massacred anymore so they stopped counting the civilian massacres okay if the data is giving you problems right making your optics look bad in front of the citizens of the united states you just don't collect that data anymore right simple as that okay the video shows at the very least uh, lacks and rules and in, uh, in, in front of the bad calls are made but when they are 10 plus civilians on the live you don't call unless you know to be war crime it must be international accidental targeting of civilians does not qualify but it obviously huge problem of tragedy post-apocalypse you can justify this any which way you want i know it's hard to live with it's very hard for me to watch this thing i've had to watch it multiple times now right i, I wish i didn't have to watch this thing but um you know whatever you need to do to be able to live with yourself and live with the fact that this has taken place multiple times during the last 20 years and more obviously right but to such a degree is unbelievable to me anyway why solitary confined such a terrible why is solitary confinement such a terrible punishment uh because we are um uh, us human beings need to engage with other human beings okay otherwise we go insane it depends on the severity of the crime a cover-up equals war plus cover plus a cover equals war crime is it true is it it sure looked like a drone uh as it's circling and not a static path okay might be a drone okay uh, it was an apache apache it was an apache it is a gruesome but it was in war situation shooting people getting wounded uh, or bodies is allowed as long as they are combatants themselves again post-apocalypse they were if if these military personnel the people who pulled the trigger to the pilot to the people watching this on video live streaming in the combat room if they couldn't tell that these people were civilians then they are noobs they are children with guns right they are have not been trained to be able to engage in war okay if you if you need to go to surgery and someone chops you up left and right trying to remove you they, they, you can't you can't justify this any which way right these military personnel were not people that were put in a, in this type of situation in the last week right obviously they have been in this situation before you can you can make it a bad call if you want put it under a bad call but if i, I was a private employer and i hired people like this my company would go bankrupt right you don't just say oops my bad to this kind of terrible you don't though we are normalizing war my wife is watching with me and she is absolutely shocked the u.s government needs to be held accountable no one was held accountable spider-man dehumanizing people 
the people makes it easier for them to say they are armed when they are not sign of the kill murdered it is difficult to divide people uh, div um, divide between combatant and non-combatant deaths because combatants and uh, abandon uh, post-apocalypse brother or sister of course um, I'm sorry the the number of civilians that have been slaughtered in Afghanistan in Libya in Iraq in Syria by the allied coalition US NATO forces is uh, huge huge right but that's sort of the way war goes a lot of civilians get massacred during wartime right more civilians than soldiers okay so any which way you look at it the u.s military did not come out and say oh we killed a whole bunch of civilians right they still denied it even after this video came out right so just imagine how many times this has happened where we don't have the video okay how many Chelsea Mannings do we need within the U.S. military to be leaking information for citizens of the United States to know exactly what is taking place in their name, right, with their tax dollars? And we're not talking chump change here. We're talking just in Afghanistan alone, $5 trillion or about in the last 19 years. That's no joke. What could you do with $5 trillion if you had it? I'd provide free health care to everyone, maybe. <laughs> right free education what, what would you call it buy everyone a lollipop right regardless there were no visible weapons there were no combatants in that there there is none i think post-apocalypse is just trying to deal with it in, in in a certain way that his psyche allows him to do that and that's okay if you need to deal with it in that type of uh, light then deal with it in that type of light and try to sort out your emotions over the next few years or decades and hopefully you realize what has taken place uh, and you reconsider uh, your perspective on it okay also we don't know if the people in the van are combat the people in the van they were kids man they were if you watch the longer video there were two kids okay in the van it was basically i believe it was a father and two kids and one of their friends that saw people bleeding to death and they went to help right and check this out when the kids were shot up the u.s military's foot soldiers came into the scene and they looked at the scene and they realized oh my god we because the foot soldiers were not involved with the apache helicopter right they came in and went oh my god our our friends just massacred a whole bunch of civilians right and they saw two kids there right and went oh my god there's two kids that we just shot up right so i believe a couple of soldiers grabbed the kids they put them in a military military car military van or something like this right and military humvee and they drove to an Amer american military base because they knew there was medical personnel there that could help the children right when they got to the Mer american military base the guards denied them entry they said those kids cannot be treated in the hospital that was set up on the military base and the soldiers were trying to say look we shot up these kids they're dying right we need to we need to do this right because the, the soldiers are not bad per se right they're just following orders it's just a machine bureaucracy right sure there are bad apples in there but there are people in there that really are human they're kids like a lot of these soldiers are just kids 18 year old 19 year old kids that that were put in this type of situation so they were trying to help out these two little pre-teens right if you watch the video and the u.s military base denied them entry and they had to drive further to take them to the medical facility within the town that they were in right now i don't know i think that kids survived uh, if i recall correctly but i don't know uh, the odds are i mean What's your life going to be if you shot up with bullets that are this big from an apache helicopter i have no idea man what did you lose did you lose arms and legs and what also we don't know if the people in the van are going to ah, civilians die okay i've missed a whole bunch of chats so i'm gonna scroll down gang um 
Chicho, I would mostly blame this on the higher ups because even though they sounded like bad people because of their commas, but if I'm in that scenario, I can't just disobey orders because then I'm committing a crime. Uh, Hayden, I agree with you. The American military, there's a lot of people, a lot of kids there, um, a lot of kids there that are just, they're there out of circumstance, man. They're there out of circumstance. Okay. Uh, bah, bah, bah. I'm trying to show that there are two sides. Sure, post apocalypse. Uh, Birdie here, I'm not sure uh, why your comment was uh, auto mod zapped it. We can sit here and say it was hard to see, but it, in the video, they state as if it's clear as day there are multiple AKs, not any mention that they may not be armed or it is hard to see. This is the least monumental okay this is <laughs> sorry uh birdie here i had to approve it manually okay of course there are two sides to every story now that put julian assange on the crosshairs for the u.s military for the u.s government right they they pulled every string they could to get their hands on chelsea manning really the u.s the whole apparatus u.s government went after chelsea manning they were and the way they found out uh, that Chelsea Manning was a person was a person that leaked this information was because Chelsea Manning confided confided in one of her friends, right? And the friend uh, gave her up, right? Higher, higher, usually clueless, right? So the friend gave her up, and that's how they found that out and all this jazz. And this really kicked things into gear. And if you look at the um, basically we did a reading through it during one of the live streams that the documents that the u.s u.s government filed to get julian assange extradited from the from the uk and a lot of it had to do with the leaks that chelsea manning provided okay i believe all of it had to do with the leaks that chelsea manning pro uh, provided and i don't have I, unfortunately i didn't i didn't uh, prep that website where all that uh, it was listed of uh, the charges that they're filing under um, that they filed to get Julian Assange extradited, right? So, uh, the, the, because it, it, we covered it, but it's not really relevant. Because anybody that knows what's going on, you know exactly why Julian Assange is being crucified. And the reason Julian Assange is being crucified is to use him as an example for other journalists and other whistleblowers to make sure that this type of information is not leaked to the general population anymore. Basically, our centralized governments want to be able to commit war crimes, commit massacres, do whatever the hell they want, okay, in the world without being held accountable. And no one, ha no one has been held accountable for any of these war crimes that have been committed, right? So that's the reason that Julian Assange is being, again, crucified. Crucified is the best way to say this, right? And um, by the way, let me show you what some activism uh, can look like, right? Because a few days ago, let me show you this video as well, okay? So that's, this was a collateral murder video, right? Let me change the view on, on this thing. So this was the collateral murder video that we just saw, the short version, right? And there's a longer version, obviously, on WikiLeaks' page. But here's a one-and-a-half-minute video where a bunch of activists, and this was loaded up on February 20th, right? And RT loaded this up. I couldn't find this on anywhere else, not on the Western mainstream propagandist anyway. And this is what activism can look like. There was a bunch of people that projected the collateral murder video on the parliament building i think it was a parliament building what was it projected on uh campaigners have projected the footage of an american airstrike on iraqi civilians originally exposed by wikileaks onto the parliament building in london to protest against the proposed extradition to the u.s of julian assange now just imagine if this took place in every city in the united states right i hope i see it Let's take a look at this video. Crazy Horse 1 8 have 5 to 6 individuals with AK 47s. Request permission to engage. Let me know when you have it. Watch you. 
Light them all up. Come on, fire! Hey, Roger. Oh, yeah, look at those dead bastards. Nice. Will the Prime Minister agree with the parliamentary report that's going to the Council of Europe that this extradition should be opposed and the rights of journalists and whistleblowers upheld for the good of all of us? Roger, we have a black SUV or a bongo truck picking up the body. Fuck. Request permission to engage. 1-8, engage. Clear. Come on. Clear. Okay, so I thought that was pretty important, personally. Uh, phenomenal activism uh, really brings the point across, right? Apache uses a 30 millimeter gun fired from a long distance using a night vision video camera to aim. It was designed for fighting armored vehicles. Well, they shot up a whole bunch of civilians. Hey, Chicho, Intelligent Blueberry, how are you doing? I have a question regarding the GPA concept. Is it important to have a high GPA between three to four when it comes to applying for jobs? No, uh, Intelligent It really depends on what type of job you're applying for, but no. I, I doubt it if that's, that's becoming less and less important. Or even when it comes to future working performance, no. The only place, uh, the main place that GPA matters if you plan on go on the academic route where you want to go to post-secondary education or whatever it is you want to go into right so that's one filter they use to you know decide who gets into their program or who doesn't get into their program when it comes to the real world the workforce gpa doesn't matter okay the courses you take does matter your experience does matter the programming languages you know does matter right but gpa no as far as i know very few people give a rat's ass about okay while i understand the sleepy waves uh, while i understand the mechanisms that the military police use to recruit the poor i still do believe you choose to sell your body and soul to the state to continuous suppression in exchange for crumbs from the state sleepy waves the kicker is some people don't have any other out right the centralized education almost guarantees that you do not question the military machine or your centralized government. And most people, when they realize what has taken place, what they've signed up for to get an education, to get health care, to get out of poverty, it's too late. They've already found themselves massacring civilians, right? And now they have to live with that trauma of having done that, right? Some people adjust. A lot of people won't, right? I personally wouldn't if I was put in that situation. How do you deal with yourself if you were the person pulling the trigger here? I don't know. I really don't know how you would deal with yourself, right? I'm more of a centralist, but I do think anyone exposing government secrets of crimes or possible crimes should be uh, illegal. Uh, I'm more of a centralist, but I do think that anyone exposing government secrets of crimes or possible crimes shouldn't be legal agreed because it's for the betterment of the society and there are clauses in there saying you're allowed to do this right if you see someone committing a war crime someone committing crimes against humanity crimes against peace extorting funds you're allowed to blow the whistle on them right if the pilots fired knowing that they were unarmed non-combatants then they would be clearly in the wrong and would be held accountable if accidental then the consequences are less clear depends on the circumstances post-apocalypse none of that looked accidental to me i think the situation is more gray than is portrayed um, from the video doesn't look great to me okay and ex especially considering that the united states government was denying what took place for i can't remember how long after 
the events that took place and for how many months the US government was denying what was taking place until Chelsea Manning released that information okay to WikiLeaks and by the time WikiLeaks vetted out uh, vetted the information out and was able to release it I, I think it was a couple of years two three years before we saw the video during that whole time the US military was denying what took place right is the purpose to continue showing that video to have people hate America more than they're no it's not it's it's like saying oh did WikiLeaks release this information Did Chelsea Manning release this information to have people hate America absolutely not is to reveal war crimes like just because the truth hurts it doesn't mean the truth is bad right or has an alternate agenda the truth is the truth right people have to appreciate that respectfully disagree very clear they state the the state the van is picking up bodies they shoot it up no marks on on gunfire guns who's in the van picking up bodies to take the medical care not great at all so one some people sign up because they think serving their country is honorable agreed uh Vula, 100 agreed i i don't deny that right people look at uh, look at tulsi gabbard she came out she's come out and said she joined the military after 9 11 because she wanted to serve her country right and what took place was those in power abused their position of power they lied to the american people and they took them to wars that had nothing to do with 9 11. the the people in charge of the united states the bush regime right bush jr regime they invaded iraq knowing that iraq had nothing to do with 9 11 or al-qaeda this is fact okay this is 100 percent fact now that we know this and we've known this for a while now right the, there's no denying it like everybody knows this they've even admitted they came out and lied about this right they lied to get the united states into a war right why are they not held accountable for their crimes you have to ask yourself that it's not the soldiers that are responsible for what's taking place it's the people that sent the soldiers into these countries right which is the reason why julian assange is being crucified right why wikileaks is on the crosshairs is because they're re revealing the truth right of why these wars are taking place now citizens of countries can decide that they want to close their eyes hide them, don't speak right because they don't want to know they don't want to know that crimes are being committed in their name because it's too much to deal with okay so really don't we shouldn't go off tangents and blame the soldiers and blame this but it is a machine that is doing this right we have to take a look at this machine and figure out how we can fix this okay closing our eyes ears and not speaking about it is not going to solve anything right we're just guaranteeing that more crimes like this will be committed and they have been committed since this video was released look at what we did to libya for lies again right look at what we did to syria for lies again right how many times must this take place for us to say okay we got a question what the hell is taking place here right which is what the u.s government the uk government the powers that want to wage war don't want to happen which is why they're going after julian assange and wikileaks okay they stated in the video that they were picking up weapon apocalypse they shot the video we see what's taking place in the video right it's like the police saying don't resist don't resist while they shoot up someone tied up with their hands in their back right they're just playing a scene right they're just saying what they need to say to record it so they can do what they need to do right when you see someone accidentally shooting themselves with their hands tied behind their back with the police lighting them up what are you going to believe the court systems aren't prosecuting the police okay people know what's that right it doesn't have to be shown over no it doesn't 
But not for us anyway. We've seen it. As far as I'm concerned, voila, this activism, this type of activism with projecting this one and a half minute video on buildings should be done across the United States in every city because most people haven't seen this. How is that possible, right? Most citizens of the United States have no idea what the collateral murder video is, right? The mainstream media, CNN, I believe it was, even told their viewers that it was illegal for them to go on WikiLeaks and read stuff, right? Just imagine the main, one of the main corporate propagandists in the United States called a news agency, news channel, told their citizens that it is illegal for them to go to WikiLeaks. What? Really? Is this the type of society we want to live in? Is this the type of society that you think will see humanity into the future? Or you would like them to see humanity into the future? Not me. Not me. And if the corporate propagandists are not sharing the truth with the citizens, then the citizens have to bring the truth to the streets. Right? That's the way I see it. I want to see this video projected in every city in every Western country in the world, okay, including Canada and the UK and France and Italy and Germany, right? Soldiers have, have, have to depend on the chain of command, giving them a justified mission and accurate information. Yeah, I agree, post-apocalypse. Chicho, Ramsey Otra, the 22-year-old who filmed Eric Garner, is still in prison for filming his murder. Yeah. He is set to come out this summer, but he was literally the only person who went to prison because of that situation. People in the States, in this case, here in New York City, don't even know the law. Yeah. Sleepy ways, I agree. It's insane. It seems like so many people just don't actually care about the uh, proof or the facts anyway. Willful ignorance. What can be done? Um, the kicker is... I think if people were given a legitimate choice, they would care, right? The, prob the problem is, is the centralization of power, centralization of information, censorship. If we have a platform where people are exposed to points of view and there's open discussion, then people will start to care. There are many examples of many people becoming hardcore activists once they learn the truth, right? Lonely Piggy, how are you doing? Hey, Chicho and Chad, hope everyone's doing well. Doing well, brother. Thank you. Many pilots of drones and attack aircraft felt uncomfortable with the frequent ambiguity of targets, but that was the job they were given. Um, Geneva Convention has, has come and said, we, we figured that out after World War II, that committing war crimes is not justified, justify or excuse uh, by saying that the chain of command told me to do so right soldiers are not robots okay soldiers can be held accountable if war crimes are committed and they can't use the excuse of the chain of command told me to do this this is international law post-apocalypse they had to make calls based on limited information and hope it was the right one at the very least hundreds of thousands of civilians were killed in iraq do you think all of those were uh, accidental post accomplice how many how many were deemed acceptable casualties all of them is the answer after the incident and similar ones uh, the top leaders changed the rules of engagement to be more cautious now post apocalypse did they change the rules of engagement after this incident or were they forced to change the rules of engagement after the leaked video ask yourself that if they change the rules of engagement after all this information was coming out, then how important is WikiLeaks and Julian Assange? How important has their journalism been? How important is Chelsea Manning? Right? Very, very, very important. Does the United States government, United States military, want to change more rules of engagement based on more leaked information? Hell no. They want to continue doing what it is that they're doing, right? Do you have a source on that? Not all were accidental, but those who were 
caught were charged with murder and served time in uh, Leavenworth for uh, post apocalypse. Who was? <laughs> as far as i know very few soldiers and sending the foot soldiers to serve time in jail for commands passed down for higher ups is the wrong thing to do you need to go to the higher up and send them to jail right and the foot soldiers who pull the trigger get them mental health because they're gonna have ptsd right the people in power who told the soldiers to pull the triggers they're the psychopaths right they're the murderers right the soldiers further down right they're they're kids man they need support they need help okay because they're coming back to our communities traumatized okay i served in the u.s army during that time in an apache unit I would say that the leak video certainly put pressure on leaders to to be more careful here so post-apocalypse we agree on that right what was their main uh reaction to these videos being released it wasn't to change the rules of engagement in a big way it was to go after wikileaks and julian assange just imagine the resources they put into play to go after julian assange and wikileaks right so they're not admitting their crimes they're not trying to change their ways they're trying to punish the people who are forcing them to change their ways right that is a that is a destructive machine okay it seems you have a bias because you're serving time which i totally understand i yeah for me as well of course i have a regarding uh, by the way that's spider-man um, talking to post-apocalypse right of course i have a bias but i also have perspective and information that a viewer of these videos out of context will not have agreed rose tinted glasses i'm afraid i understand and i can see your perspective as well cool. now what else do i have lined up here here's the let's watch another video uh speech given by yanis Vorofakas, a powerful speech on free Assange in London. This is this one is a four and a, a five minute video that uh, we can watch. Okay, let's take a look at this video as well. Now that I caught up with the chat, let's bring that down. Um, let me bring up the chat. Okay, so let's just uh, watch this video, just this speech as well. And there's count. There's a few speeches that you can watch. And personally, for me. I found it uh, beautiful that so many people had shown up for this march. I wish there were hundreds of thousands, but even this many uh, is a good thing. Okay, so hold on, let me adjust the volume here so we don't blow out everybody's ears like we did on the previous one. You can chain me, you can torture me, you can destroy my body, but you can't imprison my mind. Well, Julian. Julian, you have won the right to say this, but we don't have the right to agree with him. We have a duty. We have a duty to stop them from destroying Julian's body. We have a duty not to let them continue his torture. Comrades, first they came for Julian. Next, they will come for our comrades, our friends, our neighbors. Immediately after that, they will come for the good people of The Guardian and of the BBC. They will go after anyone who dares challenge the right of power of the oligarchy without frontiers to commit crimes against humanity in our name without our knowledge. Do you remember some months ago, Mike Pompeo, let me remind you who that gentleman is, he was Trump's first choice for CIA director and currently the Secretary of State. He described WikiLeaks as a non-governmental, hostile intelligence service. You know what? He's right. This is exactly what WikiLeaks is. But also, it is exactly what any self-regarding newspaper, television station, radio station should be a non-governmental intelligence service on behalf of 
citizens that are looking critically at their government Dan Ellsberg, that wonderful whistleblower, one of my greatest heroes, and Noam Chomsky, another hero of ours. They warned the journalists who are failing so spectacularly to defend Julian today. They warned them, you are next. You are on a hit list with a ranking order, the hit list of President Trump, who considers all of the press to be the enemy of the people. When you turn a blind eye to Julian's torture, you are consenting to your own emasculation. That is our message to the BBC. That is our message to The Guardian. Of course, you do not need me to lecture you, because by being here, you have proven that you know all that. But you've also acquired a duty, we all have, to let into the secret those who are not here today. Because, you know, Julian's worst enemy, freedom's worst enemy, are not evil people in smoke-filled rooms plotting against good people. No. Julian's worst enemy, freedom's worst enemy, is apathy. It is fatigue. It is good people too tired, too exhausted, too disheartened, working zero-hour contracts, whatever, to be able to expend the energy that you and I have the privilege of expending today. It is banality. It is people who are neither good nor bad working in these offices in Whitehall. No, they're not evil. They're just banal. Too banal to care. We have to make them care. On the 10th of March, in a few days' time. One of the projects that Julian and I started is going to see the light of day. Watch out for Euroleaks. <laughs> Soon after we met, together with Brian Eno, who hates being in this very small clique, but it's not a small clique because, as Brian knows, what we started with Julian Assange in February 2016 in Berlin, the Democracy in Europe movement now has tens of thousands of members everywhere. As we speak, a similar demonstration is taking place in Athens with our members of parliament representing the movement that Julian Assange helped to put together. Tomorrow, I'm going to be in Mel Belmarsh, visiting together with John Shifton Julian's magnificent father, Julian. I will go in there with trepidation and a sense of guilt because I'm going to walk in there, but I'm also going to walk out of And basically what he says there is uh, he feels guilty of watching the other video where he's going to be walking in, but he will be able to walk out, but Julian will still be stuck in prison. Okay. Why are we still connected up? Oh, there we are. Okay, so we're still alive. Good. These errors from OBS. Um, just post apocalypse regarding this thing with Julian Assange helping uh, Chelsea Manning uh, hack into the thing. First of all, he wasn't able to access the data through Assange's help. Second of all, all journalists do this. They help their sources access information, right? This is something that has been talked about by numerous people, um, including some of the mainstream journalists saying, look, this is what we do. We try to help our sources to get us more information, period, right? So basically, they're trying to crucify him for journalism. Who steps over the line? The people committing the crimes or the people exposing them? Well, both can be crimes, sure. But there is a relative aspect to the whole thing. But Julian did a greater good for society in the process. Huge, huge, huge. Really, um, like what, um, what WikiLeaks has done for humanity is... Uh, I really can't think of any other platform any other time in history where so much has been revealed about power 
uh, so quickly to shine a light on what's taking place in the world. WikiLeaks is it, right? In my opinion, depends. Public institutions should not have the right to privacy that we should. However, these days it's only them who have it. Uh, Katarads, I 100% agree with you. Power needs transparency. Human beings, us, we need privacy. If you wield more power, then you have to have more transparency. If you don't hold power over anyone else, you're living your life, then you need complete privacy, anonymity, right? So you can tr treat this as a scale system, right? The more power the institutions and people have, the more transparency they must have, okay? The light must be shining on them because they control much, a lot of power, okay? Me and you, we don't wield that much power, okay? That's the way privacy should be played out. And that's the way WikiLeaks and Julian Assange have agreed that that's the way that's one of their main thesis as to why WikiLeaks came to be power needs to be held accountable right I don't understand what they're trying to say about Russia like are they still trying to say Russia interfered in the 2000 the sleepy waves they're not only trying to say Russia interfered in the 2016 elections they're trying to say Russia is interfering in the 2020 elections can you believe it <laughs> It's, it's like a circus is it and some people actually believe this crap right like really it's unbelievable to me i i question their sanity many people and i have questioned the sanity of many of my friends right i piss some people off too bad as uh Gabo Mate, Aaron Mate's father, and Gabo Mate deals with addiction. He's from Canada and Vancouver, and he's done a tremendous amount of amazing work with addiction and mental health and stuff like this, right? And as he would say, and as he had said, it is better to be disillusioned than to be illusioned, right? So whenever I see someone being under the hypnosis of the centralized power, believing this kind of garbage that Russia gate and this and this and this. I do my part to disillusion them, right? And sometimes I'm a little bit too harsh on my disillusion, disillusionment process. <laughs> yeah, there have been many journalists who have done similar or worse things to get info stories. The UK newspapers that tapped phones of famous people comes to mind. Yeah, Nicholas, how are you doing? Hey, Chicho, hey, chat, just home. How was the stream? The stream was pretty good, pretty intense, as you can guess, Nicholas. As you can guess, influence on of China and U.S. politics in the bil billion times stronger than Russia. Most of it by uh, technically legal means. Uh, agreed. China's influence on U.S. politics is a lot more than Russia, but there is another country whose influence uh, dwarfs any other country's influence, right? And that is Israel. Okay, Israel the influence they have on the u.s elections is like two three four orders of magnitude greater than what china is okay so uh, I, I don't think any sane american should uh really believes the russiagate story the kicker is the disclaimer there sane american or sane human being or sane canadian Do we, i live in canada and there's canadians that actually bought this russiagate thing hook line and singer sinker right i had a lot of discussions with people that i told them in 2016 when this thing came out i said look man you're being duped stop watching cnn and abc and all this crap and three years down the road they turned to me and I go oh my god i wasted three years of my life believing this bs right it's unfortunate it's unfortunate should we leave uh read a few paragraphs of this thing or um let me do this uh, what kind of reaction do you get when you bring these kinds of things to the attention of others i want to talk about it to friends and family but don't really know how to go about it hello sir hello warbur uh she knew um i don't necessarily try to bring it up personally it has come up with a number of uh my friends and associates and stuff like this they don't bring this up anymore in, in, around my presence because i don't let garbage slip by 
like if they make a comment regarding anything i lay them down with a little bit of truth right if they if they ever dare to mention julian assange's you know parrot what cnn or abc or anything they've read on facebook tells them i usually always uh, set the record straight so they don't really mention that crap around me anymore right so you do alienate yourself to a certain degree uh, through certain discussions but that keeps that uh, focus on them right it keeps them in their mind uh, that you think opposite of them so when at some point they do get exposed to the truth the first person to come to mind for them that told them that they were being lied to would be you so you open the door for them to uh, talk to you again regarding these situations if they really want to know the truth right so it's not a short-term thing that you can change people's minds that have been propagandized for a number of years right it doesn't happen central programming central indoctrination takes a long time to to break right so it's difficult it's difficult to my understanding there's a lot of evidence that russia did interfere in the last election through targeted messages and disinformation campaigns using social media um Azrael, they spent how many thousands of dollars? Hillary Clinton in the 2016 election spent one billion dollars. You're telling me that let's assume Russian agents, Russian people, which is Russian people really, it's not the Russian government. When they say Russia, it's not Russia, it's a Russian, right? Like there's a, there's a difference, right? So russians spent a few thousand dollars creating memes and buying advertisements on facebook hillary clinton the dnc spent one billion dollars trying to get elected you're telling me the u.s elections are so fragile that if that some people spending a few thousand dollars can get their the person that they were pushing elected that's how fragile u.s democracy is and if it's that fragile what right does the united states have or the western governments have to try to propagate try to force other countries to adopt this kind of democracy in their countries including invading them and destroying them raising their countries to the ground right this is how fragile american democracy is that it can be co-opted would it can be hijacked by russians spending a few thousand dollars to counter billion dollars spent by the democrats that is insane that is insane i've read several books from a few different people on different sides of the fence it's hard a hard hardly improbable and very easy to do with their tra tactics but don't think assange is an agent or, or should like no he's not right if you're in the cybersecurity space and have had to deal with Assange, I feel for you. WikiLeaks against tech companies can have unrealistic expectations. Okay, slow and steady. Makes sense. Thank you. Love your stuff on YouTube, by the way. First time catching this. Awesome, Sheena. She knew. Uh, yeah, slow and steady. You can't you can't do this, Speedy Gonzalez style. You can't force reality on people who have been living an illusion right it shatters their minds and they crack you don't want to crack people you love right you don't want to shatter their minds right unless they're addicted to something then you want to really bring, you know help them out right but if they're living their lives and doing their thing they're just uninformed you don't want to shatter their minds because what that does is it alienates you right then they won't talk to you I, unfortunately i'm guilty of this i've done this with some people but i'm very intolerant when it comes to ignorance uh, especially in regards to people who are supposed to be well connected and active online consuming information when they willingly consume propaganda right uh, i'm more way more tolerant with students of course right with my students that i teach mathematics uh, it's 
like i'm very patient with adults i have a less patience okay why won't it be russia not like putin has much moral scruples also i'm not saying that at all simply that there was intended interference i made no claim of the efficiency of that interference uh, possibly right but if you want to see interference in in someone else's government in someone else's elections look into what the united states did to russia in the 1990s right that is interference really you can't even compare what what has taken place right for a decade the united states eluded russia right they put a puppet in power and allowed the country to be decimated okay you have to put everything into perspective i'm really asking and not trying to troll i like information yeah for sure uh as our as a role. um so it's you know if i if i make a meme does that mean i i interfered in the elections in the united states not that i have all right by doing this does that does that mean i'm interfering in the elections in the united states no i'm speaking my opinion just because people speak their opinion and they're passionate about it it doesn't mean that they're interfering with the process they are part of the process right just like the dnc spending a billion dollars to get a warmonger a mass murdering war criminal elected when she lost right and then you get the other <laughs> the other party getting into power which is it's just a joke right true but media made it look like russia was the main fault oh yeah how's her thing are we still in this mode okay let me we're not gonna get a chance to read this thing i'm gonna switch up to this mode apologies if uh, i was still in the other mode uh true but media made it look like russia was the main fault for hillary losing and that he got debunked and uh billinger yeah that's exactly what they did and one of the reasons they did that is because they needed to go after wikileaks and julian assange the u.s military the u.s government the powers that be the u.s propagandist so-called news sources the corporate centralized news sources they needed to get wikileaks out of the game right and that's one of the reasons they pushed it russia metal in the u.s of course but the scale of of it is relatively small i i personally don't think russia meddled okay we can, we can argue all day and night on it and it's it's irrelevant because if they spent a few thousand dollars and like a few thousand a billion <laughs> we're talking about rounding error not even rounding error right it's like saying you count the american citizens down to the last person as opposed to the hundred thousand like it, it doesn't even play out in any mathematical term it you wouldn't even in any scientific term you wouldn't even include it in your data okay they looted russia in the 1990s it was horrendous what they did in the 1990s to russia unprecedented okay have you read the edward Snowden book if so what do you think i haven't read the edward Snowden book but i've been following edward Snowden. um since day one when the stuff was leaked out right the whole purpose of russia gate was to distract away from corruption and misdeeds in other areas by u.s uh politicians and lobbyists 100 percent agree post-apocalypse and unfortunately it worked on a lot of people right you really think they framed this whole russia scenario so they could capture assange and blame Wikileaks? it's part of it for sure it's part of it for sure it's part of it by the way i've missed a lot of um, follows and subs and just letting you guys know thank you for the follows thank you for the subs okay i don't i, I don't usually interrupt discussions uh, to say so as they're coming up but i do appreciate them thank you very much i don't know what the connection is how is wikileaks responsible for russia Th that's the kicker they're trying to say russia and wikileaks are connected and with trump it's, it's just insane it's absurd oh i completely understand usa massive and aggressive international campaigns but i don't like making tit for tat uh, opinions of uh subjects hillary failed because she was a terrible candidate terrible 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 they treat they, they treated the american people like idiots right the dnc hillary that branch 
treated Americans as if they were dum-dums, incredible. How could Americans stand for that, right? She called half of American deplorable and the other half she treated like an idiot. It's like, what? I've, I have American friends. I've been to the United States. Americans are some of the most intelligent people you ever talk to, right? They, they understand their rights. They understand community support. They understand what's going on economically, politically, even though they're, it's not front and center. But once you come out and straight out lie to them in their faces and spit on them, you, man, you're going to get some people pissed off, right? And don't piss off Americans, right? <laughs> it's funny how everyone is freaking out about asylum seekers for from south america but have no idea that all the decentralization in the area basically completely the cia's fault that that's beyond debate that it's beyond debate look at what hillary did hillary obama did in honduras honduras is some of the, the most amount of refugees coming in they're coming in from honduras and that's because obama administration hillary they supported the coup in honduras military in honduras to put in death squads in there right what do the what choice do the Hondurans have? The CIA is in there arming, funding death squads to, to kill their family. Man, I get the hell out too. Right? Chicho, I have been watching your streams for so long, but hearing you say Russia didn't spend significant time meddling in your elections uh, is really surprised. Uh, Contra, as far as I'm concerned, it's it's not it wouldn't even count as um an error in in the data right and scientifically it's insignificant mathematically and so you would round it up like you don't carry over five decimal places when you're dealing in hundreds right it, why why would you even consider that it's like someone having cancer all over their body coming out of them and telling them to take vitamin c and it'll be good for them okay it'll be good for you but damn it's over right i think wikileaks played a small but important role russiagate wasn't to attack wikileaks in particular but it exposed some of the truth they were trying to hide hey chicho hope you're doing well man money how are you doing zw money doing well brother thank you or sister of course right is uh it's gone going to be bloomberg hillary versus trump pants possibly possibly what a circus the vast majority of the u.s public has been internationally misinformed and when you combine that with people who rarely read beyond the headlines manipulation of, of opinion can sway elections hey chicho missed a couple of live streams hope all is well on your side james david sutton how's life brother hope you're doing well do you believe russia actually favors anyone no or just uh, favors anyone they didn't like uh, hillary that's a given hillary wanted to like seriously hillary was going to start world war three over syria like people have to wrap their heads around this hillary came out and said they wanted to impose a no-fly zone over syria because the u.s with turkey and israel and saudi arabia funding the uh, al-qaeda and they, it was al-qaeda they're funding isis like everyone knows this now they even even hillary in front of congress said yes we funded isis right they were funding ISIS. they wanted to impose a no-fly zone over russia uh, over syria russia had planes flying over syria so basically hillary was saying that they wanted to go to war with russia right what kind of a lunatic wants to do that right of course russia most likely didn't want hillary in power because there, she was going to start world war three and russia was not going to pull out of syria russia gave their word to um help the syrian government because they were invited into the syria uh, to help the syrian government and russia anyone that's ever dealt with russia knows russian history russia stands by their word when they say something they're doing it right so i'm pretty sure russia wanted trump in not hillary or let me let me rephrase that it was basically russia wanted exactly what every american wanted anybody but hillary right most americans wanted anyway right some people say it was anybody but trump no it was anybody but hillary that's the reason trump got in 
right? So Russia was in the same mindset because they didn't want to go to war with the United States because the only way it would end would be nuclear war. Who the hell wants nuclear war other than the Clintons and the DNC, right? So, no, I'm not saying Russia didn't favor anyone. I'm saying the role they played was nothing compared to what internal domestic policy and U.S. foreign policy was doing, right? So do you have any definitive data to substantiate those kinds of claims? I don't know. I'm not sure which one you're referring to, Contra. Or just wants to so do you believe russia actually favors anyone or just wants to sow seeds of doubt into our minds about the integrity of u.s elections I, I don't look if the u.s elections are so fragile and obviously they are did you see the way they were flipping coins in iowa like really that's u.s elect that's u.s democracy and we're spending hundreds of billion trillions of dollars trying to bring this democracy flipping a coin like this to the rest of the world oh, what Are you kidding me that's insane man the manipulation by domestic uh, domestic sources including those with the dnc had a significant impact on elections russia not had negligible impact 100 percent negligible is the right word right look at the look at the democrat they they gave the questions to hillary in the debate against trump uh, against bernie like come on people russia favors russian interests should should be no surprise should be no surprise we live in a crazy crazy world lonely piggy i it blows my mind how absurd this whole circus is right it's like really as, as if nobody has studied science or understands mathematics like it's it's crazy right Russia is involved in Syria just out of altruism, though. It serves their geopolitical... For sure, that doesn't make them bad, but it does make them... Uh, it doesn't make them good. No, I, I agree with you. It doesn't make them bad. It doesn't make them good. But they have a military base in Syria. Hillary Clinton wanted to oppose, impose a no-fly zone over Syria. What are you, insane? You want to start a nuclear war with Russia? you got to be kidding me. Russia thought Trump would be more uh, uh, amic amic amicable to them than Clinton, but that didn't quite happen. No, it didn't happen, right? Because Russia, uh, Trump is bought and paid for it a thousand times over, right? But it didn't go to straight no-fly zone over Syria, which really, people really have to appreciate what that would have meant. Uh, I don't think people do. Read the... Uh, uh, Azrael talking the lonely piggy that the read blowout catch a and kill uh and a very stable genius and is it gets very crazy I, don't know what that is. I actually like the way the u.s states are decentralized it's hard to actually hack our national elections possibly the big like u.s elections were hacked right u.s elections were compromised but it wasn't by Russia, it wasn't by China, and it wasn't even by the by Israel. U.S. elections were hacked in 2016 with the Democratic Party, right? Bernie Sanders should have been nominated. The elites put Hillary in power. They took Hillary and said, no, this is our person, right? So democracy was destroyed in the United States in 2016. But it wasn't Russia or any other place. It was destroyed internally. Okay? Catch and kill. Okay. There have been repeated and sophisticated manipulation. Some ballot boxes disappeared. Caucus leaders fudged and some numbers. Anyway, what's up, Chicho? I just finished my YouTube feed. Nice. Good stuff, Dante. Doing good, brother. We're ending the stream. Woo! Oh, glad that one's over. <laughs> sort of. I don't like being so harsh, man. Really. But this stuff gets my goat, I don't know, what's it called? Goat going or whatever it is. Uh, one of the reasons is because um, the way U.S. elections are run and the illusion, delusion that people have of what democracy means. But more so, what's going to happen this week with Julian Assange and WikiLeaks, right? Um, we're watching 
a human being be crucified i mean we're watching in slow motion for the last eight years nine years right if that doesn't get you pissed i don't know what does right i think this is disingenuous to say russia was not a bad actor in the 2000s it, it it's what it what did post-apocalypse say negligible neglect <laughs> i don't know what it was you can't have a viable third party in the u.s the voting system doesn't allow it I, dante i mentioned this before my hope for the 2020 elections is uh the republicans get splintered the democrats get splintered you end up with four parties in the united states after 2020 that that would be ideal aside from that trump's in already like the circus of the democrats what the they tried but had little leverage very little i love our discussions by the way gang we disagree on some things we agree on some things uh but we're having a discussion and tell you know just open communication uncensored that's what we need in this world i think the trial could go on for sometimes uh the longer the better birdie here the longer the better the system encourages two major parties but which two are in power has flipped historically right now there's only one party it's the corporate party in the united states and they're both democrat and republican it never works a winner takes all uh, system demands a two-party system i hope it's a four-party system at least we see that in the next decade i'm socially conservative but economically liberal <laughs> i need a party to cater to my <laughs> specific needs <laughs> join the libertarians right you need voting reform to do that uh, dante whatever it takes whatever it takes voting reform grassroots movements so one thing that can happen in the united states which i think is phenomenal is local communities can shut down the federal government right they can say no we don't want this these laws to come into play in our state right look at what's happening with legalization of cannabis the federal government was not pro this you know how many people i talk to especially in bc because the before even canada legalized cannabis right like 10 years ago we we're talking about this and a lot of people saying oh chicho the united states will never legalize cannabis i go look man the federal government is going to take a long 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 time but the states are going to legalize right so we in canada need to legalize before the united states legalizes that way we're ahead of the game in terms of the economics of legalization right unfortunately in canada we had neoconservative harper government in power and the damage that the neoconservative harper government did to canada was unprecedented it's going to take 30 40 50 years to undo and they they prevented canada from being on the forefront on one of the biggest industries in the world right that that taking place right now it's going to play out for the next few decades right they prevented legalization of cannabis in canada the only reason they did that was because of ideology right however in the united states the states were able to legalize without the go ahead of the federal government and they actually challenged the federal government and they've done it in a way right where the federal government really can't do shit right now right so the united states structure is brilliant really the united states the way it's set up to give freedom of speech freedom to to protect yourself freedom to do commerce all this stuff is legit right you just have to make sure those laws um, are in place for people to live their lives the way they they can right or they're allowed to okay so there, there's a lot that can be done there's a lot that can be done a parliamentary system with the ranked choice voting would be ideal i think to a certain degree we try to get that into canada and bc and it didn't happen in france you'll be on the right side darth okay campaign finance and election reform could shift things in a more uh, democratic direction yeah i agree yes agreed you have armenian roots chicho yep darth hooky how do elections work there do you know uh, not too much i know there's um, power 
grab taking place right now, power play taking place. I know a little bit. Um, the names I'm not familiar with, but I have my own idea of what's taking place in uh, Armenia. Um, we'll see where it goes. Are there a majority party there? Um, I can't remember. Uh, there was for a while, and now the power is shifting again. While Turkey still occupies part of the historic Armenia, Turkey is a failed democracy, largely subverted by Erdogan. Yeah, Turkey is, a, Turkey is not looking good. Yep. It's Le Republican as Darth Okey. Okay, gang, let's call the stream. Keep your eyes on what's taking place in, uh, in the UK this week and the next few weeks coming out with Julian Assange. The trial begins tomorrow, uh, well, probably within the next 12 hours in the UK because they're eight hours ahead. So it begins on Monday. Uh, Julian Assange is due in court. We'll see how it plays out. Hopefully, they walk in. Judge says, case dismissed. Julian walks out, gets on a plane, goes to Australia right and it's free i doubt it that can happen though okay uh we'll see how it plays out we'll keep our eyes on it and uh we'll do more of the stuff as uh events unfold okay thank you very much for the discussion gang thank you very much for the conversation and uh, for the disagreements uh you know i think i think we all have a little of little bit of truth a little bit of fal um falsehoods a little bit of bias in us uh me for sure right and hopefully together we can come to a compromise to figure out how our societies should function right thank you very much for the conversations uh post apocalypse spider-man thank you for taking care of business dante thank you for dropping by thank you for the subs thank you for the follows everyone okay thanks for the stream trip. my pleasure gang my pleasure we'll do a stream later this week bye everyone